Hi there and welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series video and in this video we're going to talk about creating uh, load balancers for virtual private cloud. So just a quick reminder of where we're up to. So we've got our VPC created, It's uh, mine's in the London region, uh, yours might be somewhere else. I've got, uh, I've then got two um, subnets, one's in the London One Data Centre, that's long uh, one subnet, and then I've got another in the London Two um, Data Centre called uh, LUN Subnet. Uh, two uh, and I've then created a virtual machine in each and if you remember and you've been through that video um, what we then did was in, was uh, actually install the HTTPD server so an Apache server and uh, what we effectively then did was create a very simple one page website um, on each of the servers uh, and if you remember what we then did was uh, we, we, show, we showed those two websites uh, we navigated them to them through the uh, um, through their URLs, their public, uh, rather their public IP addresses uh, for their URLs and uh, we then showed that they were both different and running on different servers. So what we're going to do in this video is actually create a load balancer. So what that load balancer will do is it will take a request and it will then balance that or send uh, the request to each virtual machine uh, in turn. So what we're going to do is create something called a round robin load balancer. So the first time you get a request, it will it will go to uh, LUN1. Second time, it will go to LUN2 and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Now, what we're also going to do is set up a, a something called a health check so that if one of those servers actually goes down, it will stop um, the traffic actually being sent to that server which is down. So why do we do this? Well, first of all, the load balancer allows us to make sure that no one server gets overloaded. So, you know, you haven't got a situation where there's uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, transactions per second just being sent to one server. I mean, this is very a very simple website, but you know, if you scale this up, then you can maybe see the problem. So you're spreading the load uh, around the, uh, the the different servers. And secondly, if one of the servers goes down, or the or the subnet has tr issues, or the or the zone has issues, then if that stops working, then your website will still stay up and still be available because the load balancer will send information to it. Right, so let's go and how, actually see how to create this load balancer. So a quick recap then, I've got my two web servers. I've got my uh, web server one in London one, and I can call that via this URL, um, which is effectively its public IP address. And then I've got web server two, which is in London two. And again, I can uh, attach to that via its uh, public IP address, and that's, that makes up its URL. So the thing is now, they are both different websites, but um, you know, normally when you would do this as a, it was a, like your production uh, website and you wanted to spread it across different servers and obviously this page would look the same but I'm keeping it different just to uh, just just so you can see the load balancing more uh, more uh, easily so um, obviously here we're distributing load between two different servers but the problem is you actually have to put in the the IP address of each server to actually uh, determine which one you go to the idea of a load balancer is that you have one one URL and the uh, the web, the the, uh, the load balancer actually decides which web server you actually get, um, which web server you actually land on. And also, if one of these websites is is down, then uh, if you went to one of these and it was down, you'd, you'd obviously see some nasty, horrible error message. Which again, you don't really want your uh, your public to see. So again, the load balancer will stop that happening. Right. So let's go and create this load balancer. So I'm off to my IBM Cloud account. I'm going to go uh, and click this menu here and go back to my VPC infrastructure. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in Gen 1 because um, you know this, this is all Gen 1 compute for the time being. And I'm going to go to uh, load balancers. So I'm going to click load balancers down here. So you can see that my load balancers list is empty. So I just need to go and create one. Uh, so this is a fairly simple process. So I need to give uh, my load balancer a name. So I'm going to call this uh, my uh, London VP, VPC load balancer. There we go. I'm going to make sure it's in the right virtual cloud. And uh, I'm going to put it in my resource group, so VPC RG. Um, now, with this, you, you, you decide which region you're going to put it in. So obviously, region, it's going to be London because that's where my uh, VPC is. Uh, so again, these operate at a regional level as opposed to a zone level, um, which of course the, the virtual machines do. And then I just need to decide whether it's a public or a private one, because I want it to react to um, public incoming 
um, request for the website. I'm going to make sure that it's public. And then I just need to decide which subnets I want it to attach to. So because my um, two servers are actually attached to two different subnets, I'm going to select both of the subnets from this drop down list. OK, so that's automatically going to attach to those subnets. The next thing I need to do is actually create a backend pool. So I'm going to create a new pool. And I'm going to uh, call this uh, my, my web server uh, uh, backend pool. There we go, so I know what that is. So it's going to be uh, listening on HTTP, So because it's obviously serving web information. Uh, I can change that to TCP if I want to, but I'm, I'm using HTTP in this case. Um, and then I can do um, a, a method. So the methods here are least connections. So if I choose that, then it will be the date, the the, um, the web server that has the least connections that will uh, that the that the um, load balance will route to. Round robin is just um, uh, as it says. You you it will send the first request to web server one, the second to web server two, the third to web server one, the fourth to web server two, and round and round and round um, as as it goes. And then with weighted round robin. Well, it's sort of a, a combination between the two. So um, if I set up weighted round robin, then it will ask me um, how um, how I want to weight it. So it will be the thing with the with the least connections, um, but it will also do it on a round robin type basis as well. Anyway, I'm going to stick with round robin just to make it easy. Um, session stickiness again. I can uh, if if we've got sessions, we need to worry about sessions, uh, and and a, a request needs to go back to the same web server each time. Because of some session information that's stored, uh, then I can I can um, actually set that to uh, source IP. I'm not too worried about session stickiness. In fact, I don't really want this for the demonstration, so I'm going to stick with none. Okay, my health check path. Um, now I can do set this in several ways. I'm going to leave it at, at, um, uh, at just slash. So what that then does is it basically goes along and, and makes sure that I've got an index.html file that can actually find the web server. So I'm going to leave it at that, um, but again, you can change that to, to, to how you want it. Again, the health protocol is HTTP. Um, you can change it to the port number as well if there's a particular port. And then uh, what we're doing here with the health check is, well, how often is it going to check the health of the server? So here, the interval is every five seconds. You don't want to set it too, um, uh, to, to too low a number because you know, you're then constantly hitting your server uh, to try and find out if it's still alive which could impact performance. But then again, you don't want it too high either because then obviously there's there's a, a longer period of time between the, uh, the, the, the server going unhealthy and, and uh, something checking to see whether or not it is healthy. And if that period is too long, then again, you could, your users could start to see nasty messages because the server's down. Um, so it will then, uh, so once it's doing the health check, if the, if there's, a, there's a timeout. So it's two second timeout. If it doesn't get a, a response to say that the uh, the server is healthy, um, then after two seconds it will say, "Okay, well this this server is no longer healthy. I'll stop sending requests to it." And uh, then there's a max retries as well. So it will try and do that twice. Um, uh, and if it can't after twice, then it will say that it's down. So effectively, what you're getting here is um, it will take say let's say 14, 15 seconds before the before your web server is actually confirmed as being dead. So I'm going to create that. I'm going to leave those all pretty much as defaults and uh, click create. Uh, then I'm going to create a front end listener. So I'm just going to click create new listener. So again, the, um, uh, the, the protocol is HTTP. I'm going to give it a port. So it's listening on port 80. Again, because it's a web server. Um, and uh, it's going to go to my back end pool. So that's, that's the pool I've just set up. And the maximum uh, connection, so this is optional. So if you leave it at blank, then it's going to assume a maximum number of connections, so 15,000, uh, before before the uh, the load balancer itself stops actually uh, uh, taking connections. So I'm going to leave that blank, because uh, I'm, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. So I click Create, and that's all done. Uh, now all I need to do um, is uh, just check the details over here. So you can see again, this is going to attract a, a, an estimated monthly charge. Um, so there's a charge here for, for uh, the usage of the service. So I'm going to click to create the load balancer. And uh, that's just going to kick off the process. Now creating load balancers does uh, tend to take a little bit longer 
uh, or probably about 15, 20 minutes in my experience. So what I'm going to do is just pause the video here and I'll, uh, I'll come back once that load balance has actually been created. Right, so my load balancer is now provisioned. Um, I think that probably took about, let's say, 10, 15 minutes or so. So it takes a little bit longer than a virtual machine, uh, but it's now actually up and running. Uh, now, what you can see here is, um, well, again, the, the status is active and see the name of it, etc., etc. The uh, the important thing here is this host name. So this host name is actually the um, effectively the host name of the of the load balancer. So this is the name that you're going to be hitting uh, with your web request. Now that doesn't look particularly pretty, I have to admit. So if you um, if you want it to be something that um, you know is is, is like a, a nice web address. Uh, then you need to set up a DNS for it. So again, if you've got an ISP or, or you've got DNS servers somewhere where you can uh, create a nice alias for it, then that will be the place to do it. But we're, we're just going to use this host name. Um, so, so this will be our host name. So if I go and copy that, so I'll just click on it and I can copy it. Um, if I then go to my uh, go, go to a, a fresh web page or a fresh tab and paste that in, and I press enter, I actually get this uh, 503 service unavailable. So what that's saying is that there's no server actually available to handle the request. And what we haven't yet done is actually attach any servers to the load balancer. So let's go back into uh, the IBM cloud. And uh, then if I click on the, the name of the load balancer, what I actually then need to go and do is, is uh, attach my servers to it. So again, this is just the overview page. So you can see that there's some, uh, you know, some details about what the IPs are of the, of the subnets, etc., which subnets it's listening to. Um, if I go to the back end pools, uh, this is uh, this is uh, the, the bit that's important. So um, so what we actually need to do here is actually attach some instances, i.e. servers, uh, to the back end pool. So at the moment we can see that we got uh, this is what the back end pool is up. That's our health check. So let's go and um, actually attach an instance to it. So we do this by subnet. So I'll choose the first subnet. So it's London one. And once I've done that, it will then select an instance. So web server one, London one. So that's my first one, and there's the port. And then I'm going to add another one. So this time I'm going to use subnet two, London two, and then select an instance from there, which is web server two. Uh, so I would say to attach that, I just simply press attach. And that's just going to uh, actually update the load balancer pool for me. So now you can actually see that two instances are attached to my uh, actually attached to my pool. Uh, I'm just going to check the front end listeners as well, just so we can see what's in there. So at the moment, there's uh, there's there's nothing really interesting in here. It's just saying that it's listening on port 80 uh, on HTTP. Uh, there's no policies. You can add, you can add some policies to it. It's a bit too detailed for this video, so we're not going to do that here. Right. So let's go and have a look at our back end pools again. Let's just see if it's uh, had a chance to just check that the, whether those those are healthy. So let's just expand that. So what you're seeing now is that um, we've got two intervals and we've got some max retries. So what, what I'm going to do here is I'm now actually going to go and retry uh, the URL. So let's see if anything happens now. So what you can see now is I'm actually refreshing this. And what you can see, I'm using the same URL. So this is the URL of the, uh, of the web server, of the load balancer. So I'm just refreshing my page and you can see that it is actually working. So uh, it's going on around Robin to so web server one, web server two, web server one, web server two. Okay, so that's great, it's working. So what I'm now going to do um, is actually go and break one of the web servers. So I'm going to go to, uh, and what I'm gonna do is effectively just shut down one of the servers. So I'm gonna go back to, uh, back to my uh, main screen and I'm just going to go to virtual server instances. And um, what I'm going to do is actually, um, I'm just going to uh, stop web server one. So I'm going to click stop there. Okay, so you can now see that web server one is powered back on. But if I go back to my, uh, if I go back to my load balancer, Right, so let's see if the health has come back up. And in fact, um, the health of this is still one out of two. Now I know that when I restart a server, um, the web server isn't actually restarting automatically. So let's just go and uh, let's just go and fix that. So I'm just going to go and attach to my server again. So SSH um, minus I 
Node.SSH. My London key. And um, so that will be uh, root uh, root at what's this the IP address of the server. So I should my, my password again. Okay, so if I then do uh, httpd minus k start, then that's the web server starting again. And then hopefully this will refresh on its own fairly shortly. So we'll just give that a couple of moments. And there you go, you can now see that uh, two out of two are alive. And then if I go back over to uh, back over to here and just start to uh, do that again, then you can see it's switching. So you can see that the health check's working as well. So that's pretty much it for uh, for the load balancer. Hopefully you can see that it's uh, you know pretty easy to set up. It takes a little while to uh, to provision, but you know 10 or 15 minutes. But actually, it's really easy to set up, and uh, and it's a, a really good way to create your websites and uh, offerings so that they're actually really highly available across different zones within the region. Okay, so that's the load balancer created and configured. Uh, we've seen how uh, the traffic is um, directed between the two virtual machines, and we can see that what you know what happens when one of the virtual machines is is actually switched off or or there's, there's an issue with it. So we can see that the, the load balancer spots that and then handles it so that the traffic is just sent to the remaining machine. And that's it for this video. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of the end of the, the VPC section as well in terms of Gen 1. As I, as I mentioned in the, uh, the previous video to this one, we're going to have a quick look at Gen 2. In the next video, I'm actually just going to run through this again one more time, but I'm going to do it in one single video. So I'm going to go through it fairly quickly just so you can see the, the different steps and how quick it can actually be to, uh, to to put your VPC together. And then after that, we're going to start looking at Gen 2 as well. So um, if you've enjoyed this, then I hope you're going to subscribe to my channel and uh, we'll see you in the next video.